John Brown is an award-winning short story writer. The first book in his epic fantasy series is Servant of a Dark God from Tor Books. Larry Correa is the gun-happy author of Monster Hunter International from Bayon Books. Let me just give a quick introduction. I'll, I'll introduce Larry to you, and then we'll get into this. I'm, I, I, I love life, the universe, and everything. Absolutely love it. I loved it when I was here in college, and the tips that I got, and the you know being able to hear and, and talk to actual authors. Absolutely loved it, and I love sharing what I've learned about writing. And so, uh, you know, I've been doing a, a workshop these last few years, and the, one of the organizers said, "Do you want us to do that same workshop, or do you want to change it?" And I thought, you know what? I need to change it. So I'm going to be doing something a little bit different in this one. And uh, Larry Correa and I went out on book tour together this fall. Went to four different states, a bunch of different cities, hung out, saw a lot of interesting things, you know, had a great time. Almost died a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, a lot of good stories. And, uh, and as I was developing this workshop, you know, uh, in Denver, after reading his book, he and I stayed up late one night, and we were talking about his book. And you know, not only do he and I approach writing in roughly the same way, but I, as I was developing this, I thought, you know, he's got a, a number of techniques and things that he does that I know you guys will absolutely love. So I wanted to bring him along and make sure that he had his input. So, and Larry, do you want to give him a 20-second intro to you know, who you are, your books, sure. what you do? Uh, my name is Larry Correa. I, I write for Bayon Books. I've got one book out right now. It's called Monster Hunter International. It's about a group of contractors. <laughs> yeah, Bayon. Woo! <laughs> I kill monsters for uh, fun and profit. The sequel comes out in September. The first one did really good, and I've got a second series coming out next year. Um, really looking forward to it. Like John said, we went on book tour together. Uh, we just didn't tell our publishers. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun. And uh, when you spend about 30 hours in a car with somebody, you really get to understand their philosophy of writing. We spend more time than that, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so now here's the deal. What I've noticed with aspiring authors, and what I struggled with, was that sometimes I could get the ideas, right? Get a bunch of ideas, some settings, some interesting character stuff. Maybe even get a story concept. But actually taking that from ideas, and then to knowing the scenes to write, and then actually drafting those scenes, seemed to just simply elude me. It was, it was very, very difficult. I also have noticed with new writers, that they get what I call rule-itis. And so, you know, this is a very complex thing that we're doing here. And so what they do is, and I don't know, I mean, think about yourself. You go out and you say, I'm going to go listen to the pros, and I'm going to get all the, the do's and the don'ts. And then they start, they start writing based on do's and don'ts. And uh, I, I just, I was out on writing excuses. How many of you go out and listen to writing excuses? If, if you haven't been to writing excuses, you should just listen to it. Okay, it's a great program that Dan Wells, Brandon Sanderson, and Howard Taylor do, uh, and it's 15 minutes every Monday. They talk about writing. But I remember reading in one of the posts, some guy is like, "I'm absolutely overwhelmed. You know, I'm overwhelmed. There's all these do's and don'ts." And it wasn't because the guys were, you know, listing out do's and don'ts. It's because his approach to this was I've got a million things that I'm supposed to do and a million things that I'm not supposed to do, and if I just do all those things and don't do all those other things, I'm going to write something great. But what i found is that doesn't work, okay? What i found is that, and the thing that helped me break through this, is that if I focus on some core essential things, and I get those essential things right, the scenes and the story comes all, they just they come a lot easier. And it's still a lot of work, I've still got to write the scenes, I've still got to draft, I've still got to imagine a lot of things, but the story just kind of rolls out in front of me like a carpet, okay? And so what I want to do tonight is talk about those things, what is it that we're supposed to develop and focus on, and some techniques to do that. That's what we're going to be doing. Now, I am not Jedi Master, right? I'm, I'm a new guy, right? I'm learning all the time. I'm, I've learned tons since my book got published in October. Right, I just have all these things that I can't wait to write up and and, and gel. And so there's tons of stuff that I want, that I, I've got to learn. I remember Larry and I were at a, a thing up in Sugar House, and they asked something along the lines of, "Have do you feel like you've arrived or whatever?" Do you remember your answer to that, Larry? I haven't arrived yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we're just selling books, and it's like, hey, how did we get in the door, right? So, um, but 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 having said that, having said that, 
there are some things that I've learned that, that I want to share with you. And there's some things that Larry has learned that I think will help you a, a great deal. Okay, so that's what we're going to do tonight. That's what we're going to do tonight. Now, um, okay, so let's just let's just get into this. I need a volunteer. Somebody who, so, you want to be a volunteer? Okay, stand up, sir. What is your name? This is Tom. Tom, where are you from? He, he, he's not from anywhere. He was birthed in one of those labs. All right. Tom, I want you to turn around. Sing. Just sing. Okay, let's stop. All right, let's stop. Let's, that was good. Tom, that was good. Let's give Tom a hand, folks. I was going to have Larry sing something as well, you know, and this is this is all you need to learn. Larry, do you want to sing? Someone's riding, Lord. Kumbaya. <laughs> oh, Lord. Kumbaya. All right. All right. <laughs> now, did you notice? Thank you, Larry. <laughs> he was like, how does that tune go? Yeah, I and couldn't remember, actually. He, <laughs> he writes for a bunch of, you know, a big part of his audience are gun people and military. And now I'm going to go out on his site and post. Larry was singing Kumbaya last night, guys. And you have it on video. <laughs> That's right, we got it on video. All right. So, so now this is kind of a dumb little thing, but here's the first principle, okay? This is a dumb little thing, but here's the first principle. When I asked, what was your name again, Tom? When I asked Tom, will you sing? What was his first response? I said, sing. And he was like, what? Now, many of you might not have been able to then come start singing something, right? He was like, okay, I've got a song, and he started to sing it, right? Many of us would be like, oh, stage fright. Um, but, but the principle here, and this is the first principle that I want to teach tonight. Principle number one, and I'm going to hand, give you a handout. Principle number one. Have something to say before you write. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's kind of dumb. No. You need to have something to say before you write. Okay? You need to have something going on in your <coughs> mind, something alive up here, before you write. Because if you just sit down and think that writing has to do with typing things out of the computer, you're absolutely going to fail. A lot of writing goes on up here before I start to do my draft. Now, I know that I don't get everything all up front when I start to draft. In fact, it's, it's not totally complete. I do a lot of development as I'm writing. But I have to have something alive. Larry, is it? I don't, I don't know. Same way for you? I have maybe 10, 15% in my head that's set in stone. That's going to happen. Is it jazz? Is it, is it alive in your mind? Oh, yeah, that's alive. Oh, yeah, yeah. you got to have, it's got to be there. Okay. you got to have the core, the nugget the, okay. that you need. You need something alive in your mind. There's got to be some spark, something interesting. There's got to be something to write before you write it. Now, it'll grow, but you've got to have something to write. Now, I'm